will be seeing again tomorrow because he's qualified for the top 16 points of the dual tournament and clearly doing really well in sacrifice. Now, Prozac going in with a clutch pick and Gorilla with clutch. Have I just seen both teams we might with for a the clutch? First time today. I've not only seen clutch. We might have a clutch on both teams. Now, we were actually talking about this before. We did. And, we and, did. and something we were hoping to see. So, Clutch recently got changed. So, um, now uh, his ability can now do a focused mining drill uh, as well as his sort of like, you know, barrier ability. But the important one is his um, his strafe, right? His, his air dash. The mobility. The basically. mobility. The mobility that, that, just, been given. that just lets him dash in an, a, whatever direction he wants. Has taken a character with very limited mobility to now very good mobility for a character of his size, or a champion of his size, I should say. Now, on a team-based game mode, where his barrier blocks all damage, including those of anything behind it, so if you're shielding your teammates, you can do so. If your teammates are running around trying to collect the soul, or if you yourself are running the soul because you're that fast, and you just want to, you know, uh, be protected, you can do that. And I think, uh, provided we see it on both teams, I really hope we see it put to good use, and I'd be very surprised if we don't. I feel like we could see an entirely different sort of change of, not necessarily a change of pace, but a change of just what we're used to seeing. If both teams have access to a clutch, those fights that take place on each obelisk, they will be quite unique. Because I think when we see clutch, we're likely to see the shield will saved for those really prominent, important moments where the ability to soak up all and any amount of damage means that it's going to be a complete game changer, especially seeing as if a clutch gets access to protection and he's got his shield wall up and he's chasing you, you will not kill him. You physically cannot do it because he will take too much damage. He's got the shield as well. It's going to be pretty insane. I can hear clutch. I can see two back to back. And here we go. This is another one of our round of 16 matches. Overpowered versus Rush B. Whoever wins this series will move on tomorrow and play in our Sunday playoffs to determine who makes regionals. So we are guaranteed at least one clutch in this game, I believe. Yeah, was that was that Solag I just saw taken down? Well, either way, we can see a uh, Gorilla manning that clutch pick. Gorilla gets that rail again. Now, at this stage, we've already seen how dangerous Anarchy is, but look at how fast Clutch is able to move. His dive is unbelievable. The ability to sort of strafe in any direction, but if you strafe forward, you'll simply just get a speed boost. It will go hand in hand with the passive that makes him move faster if he doesn't change direction. And it will also go hand in hand with the fact that he can strafe jump on top of that. And that's bad damage coming out this time over Rush B, probably holding on to the obelisk. You see just this, this, this defensive big, un, not scared of anything clutch, just standing outside. Well, I mean, he's four seconds away from having his shield wall activated. No doubt that shield wall is going to be a very important element of defending this obelisk. Especially with these enemies all over. Is he going to go in for a shield wall? No, he doesn't opt to. Tries to go for the frag instead. Pushes him into the jump pad. Doesn't let him escape. And the shield wall to block off the entrance. Skills trying to get out, goes on the other side, but no doubt he's being headed off and waiting on the other side. But speaking of which, they do trade. Memphis gets taken out, but then Luminous gets a rail as well. But look at how fast Anarchy is able to get back to the soul. Oh, nice the rocket jump just to quickly minimize the time it takes to get there, but Memphis is waiting for him. Now here comes Memphis on the return side, the Anarchy of their own. Trying to run back and deliver it. Look how fast this champion can move to deliver the obelisk. It's so important, especially when you root the way he did just there. Absolutely ridiculous amounts of distance covered. Right, the quad, the, uh, not the quad, sorry, the power up is going to be spawning very shortly. So you have to wonder who's going to get that, but I think at the moment, Rush B with a very distinct advantage. Power up up in mere seconds, though. Now, boy, it's a quad damage, oh. but he dies immediately. Again, quad carry gets taken out again, but here comes Gorilla. And there we go, that quad damage super shotgun with the shield wall. Is, it, it really is one of the most lethal combinations in the whole game. Quad damage clutch on us as well. This is a scary sight. Gets the sword like no, actually ever so slightly misses the rail. Trying to really double back and deliver. There we go. Gorilla once again really looking out. Ooh, misses that quad damage rail. Misses it again. Those quad rails would have one hit killed, but not necessarily now. He survived the rail because he missed the quad damage ones. Now he's got access to the soul. Can't get away though. Oh, wow. Yeah, Predator's just going to take him out there though, but right now he's trying to get through the wall, but cannot. He's being body blocked. Can't get through whatsoever. The soul is now still stuck on the so on the wall, it seems. And uh, Predator. But actually, we can see there is, I, I believe, Clutch and Sawlag. Here comes the attack. 
Really trying to keep them at bay with those rockets, but bit by bit they're getting taken out. Here comes Clutch again, but again another rocket. Sam goes down. A complete rocket fest from this point, to be honest. So many, speaking of which, here comes another one. Gorilla breaking the mold with the super shotgun, keeping things unique. Of course, and Luminous back on that Nix. We're pretty sure we saw him do this yesterday in Duels, and he's one of his stronger champions. Luminous is just going to tag these rails for blades. We actually noticed Clutch took less damage because he has got that passive where if he's standing still or walking, he will actually take reduced damage from anything. So that rail did 64% rather than 80. But right now, Rush B, you can see just, just how effortlessly they're kind of just holding this line, just not letting overpowered anywhere near them. I think that really seems to be one of the strategies. It's not necessarily like sit and defend within the obelisk space itself. It's sit just outside, and you've got so much open space to see where the enemies are coming from. Just keep them at bay. Don't even let them get near the base. Oh, on pros, I guess that machine gun kill. Now they've got the opportunity to go in. There's just two members of Rush B in there defending, but oh, it's too little, too late. That was a very, very quick round. Right. So we're going into our potential next. Could be a final round, it depends if it's a 2 0 or not. But bear in mind, sacrifice round is a two. best of three rounds rather than best of five. Of course, we're going to change this. The soul will be spawned soon. The fact that everyone starts the map with their ability, I think, is one of the, the major elements here. I think Clutch starting off with the shield wall in this kind of situation is very dangerous. Like, right, he's now going to pop the shield wall, be a distraction for his entire team. Actually, looks like Mohi just popped it to save himself, but Rush B just yeah, ignored that, him immediately. In that one instance, he definitely used it to save himself, but Rush B very intelligently going, well, this guy poses no threat. Let's just go take the uh, soul and deliver it to the obelisk again. But at the same time, Rush B's uh, Clutch held on to his ability to bag the soul. So it really comes down to, you know, timing is key when you use abilities like that. Absolutely. Now the defense is all ready coming out. Rush B almost at 10% already. Oh, Luminous. Tags one, tags two. That's going to be it. Predator is down. Still trying to rush in again to the side. The two-man push comes in. Clutch up behind, though. Not quite sure if he's got his shield or he does indeed. I did see him pop it in the distance. Oh, man. Just to defend the obelisk, though. Send one. Stops him from getting in. The Ghost Walk used aggressively. He's right in his face. All the rockets come through. Not quite enough damage to finish him off. Still there. Use the jump pad. He's in the air. Yeah, another oh, chaotic big time. And definitely another chaotic fight. The soul does disappear. Trying to catch Can Anarchy. Not quite. You can just see, even though Anarchy is so fast, he is so susceptible to rail. The acid is no doubt going to kill Luminous. But right now, it doesn't look like that's that bad of an issue. To be honest, 30% already gone. Oh, Predator Man just to get it away. The Tribal trying to pepper some damage down, but isn't quite enough. Twisters, can they get the soul away from this obelisk? So they're trying to. It is Anarchy. He's got the well safety. Placed. Yeah, he's got the safety of the, the sort of like the catacombs at the moment. It's a really sort of safe area. People don't often run down there. However, Memphis. Wow. Okay. And then there's Anarchy to pursue Anarchy. So we're consistent. So we can use speed. <laughs> we're consistently seeing that, right? You're consistently seeing an Anarchy sort of chase the other. Quite a common occurrence on this map, I think. Unfortunately, Overpower was so close to capturing Ned, getting a percentage on the board, but unfortunately, it was just snuffed completely. Once again, they're already there trying to defend it, but they got the quad damage. Once again, with Rush B having that quad damage, they can defend. But actually, I think they, they, they weren't ready for where the Soul Carrier was. I think they might have been a little bit closer to the base than they actually were. However, that quad damage Ranger is going to be on pursuit, no doubt looking to secure a couple of frags and take the Soul back. Massive amount of damage coming through. There's the barrier. That's what I'm talking about, that invincibility. Yep, and it's a completely damaged immune shield wall. Actually didn't eat that gauntlet. I don't think he realized there was a clutch behind him. Misses the rail. Gets away with that one. Gets away again. Another missed rail. There's loads of machine gun damage coming through. Rewarded for the accuracy. Skills goes down. And once again, Rush B have access to this obelisk. Currently raising loads of score. Almost 50% already. Nearly three minutes into this round. Being contested though. They're here trying to defend once again. It is Predator again. Minimal damage on the uh, die roll right now, but he goes in, secures a kill, but another trade. These points, it's just trade after trade when it comes to kills. Memphis, trying to get out of there. But once again, if you're trading frags, but you're holding on to the, uh, you're holding on to the soul, then it is going to be a trade in your favor because you're raising score while losing the same amount of sort of death as each other. Now, it may kind of seem like a little bit rude that he's going in for those gauntlet kills, but I think that Anarchy going that fast, it is very likely he's going to go point blank, and the gauntlet does so much damage. I think it's a, it's such a viable sort of up close aggressive strategy, especially if you know someone's lost a ton of health as yeah. well. Like if, if you've just hit them with a lot, or saw your teammates shoot them with a lot, and you know a gauntlet will finish them off, it's definitely not BM. It's just use you know using it properly. That's what it's there for. 
Gauntlet to do that up close damage, guaranteed. Now, I guess 85% on this point, the side of Rush B, and the power up is up. It's going to be gone for 18 seconds. I wonder if there's even going to be time for the power up to make a difference in this match. Oh, going in, he's trying to juke around. He got the soul. Can he get out alive? No, he cannot. Rush B once again are there, ready to stop him from going anywhere. Such a solid defense, but yeah, they have opted to go in for the power up instead. But because of that, I mean, just look at how much percentage is left. They have protection, but it's not going to be enough. He's definitely not going to get to this point in time. And because of that, Rush B take the first game. I really feel like they, they maybe, I don't know, maybe they sort of miscalculated how much time they would have. The second the power-up spawns, that was Anarchy as well. It's not like Anarchy was going to get to the point slowly. He just didn't get there in time. He got to the point, and by that time, it had already gone down 100%, and it's game over. So a, a very convincing first map there from Rushby. So the question is, what are they going to go with next time? You know, they, they could be one game away from being eliminated and having to try again next week, and Rush B. Looking really strong, as always. Oh, they definitely can try again next week if it doesn't go right. Bear in mind, this is week number one, and we have two qualifiers. I mean, though, sacrifice. it's one of two. You don't have as many options as you do for Duel, per se. Duel, you have four weeks to qualify, four chances. Sacrifice, you get two chances, you know, and we've almost finished the first day's worth of. So if you didn't qualify, try again next week. Make sure you bring your A game, because you want to be able to get a shot at that $1 million at the Quake World Championships. So quite a unique team composition from what we've been seeing normally. Uh, we saw a clutch both sides, but I really feel like Rush B's clutch was a bit more uh, impactful. He was using it more um, for less just damage and you know just just getting kills and, and and more just you know using it as that defender, right? That sort of designated defender. Because just look at Rush B's composition: you've got Clutch, Anarchy, Ranger, and Nyx. So you've got Clutch for just this this still defender who seems to almost by himself do a good job of just keeping the other three alive. Ranger, a bit of both. He can definitely run the soul if he's got his um, die roll around. Obviously, rocket jumping can get around. Well, he's got far, even without the die roll, uh, Ranger has really fast movement stats anyway. Yeah. Like and he's then very. And then obviously you've got Nyx and Anarchy, Anarchy especially, who could not only um, cycle that soul around and capture it uh, from one obelisk to another, but also chase down. If both teams have an Anarchy, Anarchy can't run away from Anarchy. So, you know, if, if, if you're being really confident and you're chasing down, we've already seen that from Rush B, um, you're able to just get their Anarchy chasing the enemy Anarchy, get that soul back and just run it straight back to where they want it to be. So, the... The never-ending question, which we'll always ask, what is the next map? Well, we've seen this into Lockbox there, Maybe many it's times. just going to be Lockbox again. It knows? could be, which is, I think it's a bit of a funny one, because Lockbox is what we were, is what we didn't expect to see, what yep, we were told sure. to expect the least, but it's probably one of the most popular maps we've seen actually picked to immediately after Burial Chamber. And what's it going to be this time? Ruins of Sarnath. Here no, we go. The cycle is broken, and it looks like we actually have Scalebearer, Sawlag, and Clutch. Really, we're going to have a, a full big body team. You wonder. We didn't see that fourth pick, and we didn't know if those champion picks were finals. Are we going to see a Scalebearer, Sawlag, and Clutch all on the same team? Maybe. That yeah, would be we, a first. We could do. But um, again, you know, it looks like a Scalebearer on both teams for Ruins of Sarnath. Scalebearer, very powerful on this map particularly. You know, uh, very easy to, to, to charge down from, you know, the sort of elevated obelisk down to the other one. You can cover quite a lot of distance that way. A lot of teleporters and stuff for him to sort of just run through. Um, but also just a really good pick for the map overall because there it doesn't take you very long to get from one obelisk to another on oh, Ruins of Sarnath. No, 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 definitely not. It, it's kind of crazy really how uh, Ruins is actually quite a large map, um, but at the same time, even though it's big, there's a lot of space for champions to accelerate as they move, and because of that, you can reach one side quite easily. Plus, I think it's like teleport uh, positioning as well um, across obviously near where the Tribolt is, and obviously near LG as well, where it's a large map, but you can still get around quickly, especially someone like Anarchy, for example. Again, Anarchy on Ruins looks like he's quite free to just fly around the map, just completely speed up. Then, speaking of speeding up, Clutch on a map like this might be quite agile as well because of his new speed, I guess, uh, capabilities he's got since the latest patch, which gave him that strafe. So we'll be going into what could be our final map of the night in just a few moments' time while we get this warm-up phase done and dusted. But Rush B looking very strong so far. You know, that, that was a, a the 1-0 up in the series so far. And this could be their final map, but this map was overpowered to pick. Two, one. Right. Round one. Oh my, once again, this will be a best of three within the match. Soul, Soul will spawn seconds. shortly. It's always going to be a bit foreshadowing whether a team will get the obelisk that they want. Trying to go in for his charge, but a little bit too weak to go in for it at that point. Yeah, it looks like overpowered. It really looks like they're the ones that have opted to go for this triple beef composition. Yes, you've got yourself a scale bearer and a clutch. Have they stuck with the Sawlag? I guess we'll see soon. 
now. Rush B. Even though they've got a bunch of frags, they've managed to secure it as well. And that's it. They're able to take the, the first obelisk they want. Remember, that's, that's the luxury you get. If you're able to take the soul first, you get to choose what obelisk you want to be yours for your team for the round. And again, Rush B are able to secure that. As you can see right here, actually, um, skills, the ability to, to run away, acknowledging that Scalebearer only had the gauntlet. He actually isn't going to be able to catch Nyx. And if he not, once again, Rush B put up this defensive mode. How he misses that ball rush, though, unfortunately. He is going to go down for it. Here comes Clutch. Yeah, it's going to be that triple beef trying to go in, trying to go through. But again, the gauntlet just chopping them up. Sev has had a couple of gauntlet kills already. Indeed, but I mean, this is it. They're, they're just setting up that defense and overpowered. They're trying to throw all these big tanky champions at them, but Rush B are just hitting all the shots on the mark. Going back down, trying to secure that heavy armor. Again, one of the maps where heavy armor's location is actually you know, relatively similar. And also not going to be too contested, uh, at least on sacrifice for sure. Go against behind him though. Yeah, obviously Clutch can only block incoming damage from the front. The shield does not appear behind him. So Sev, and again, just look at the areas and all with these rockets. It kind of looks like that sort of like mass health composition. It doesn't really seem to have done a whole lot at the moment. Again, that power up is going to spawn, but the, the rate at which Rush, Rush B are securing these frags, I don't think they're going to really have much of an issue taking the quad and quad versus big champions doesn't really make a difference at all. The default shotgun doing just as much of a good enough job of shredding health. So she looks like Rush B about to be swapped out their clutch for a scale bearer. It's definitely sort of playing those big champions map dependent, it seems, but definitely putting in a lot of work so far. The mobility of the ball rush is accuracy so far. And Actually, power getting caught out. I really like the fact that Gorilla has opted to go for the starting shotgun instead of. Actually, it's a couple of things. Uh, the starting shotgun instead of uh, the any other web weapons that will go hand in hand with ball rush. But we've seen a couple of starting shotguns get picked. I think it's because of these chunky champions and the fact they're going to be so up close and personal. You have a higher chance of hitting that clutch spread on these chunky champions. You're going to do big damage. I mean, to be fair, that is a lot of them have to go for that shotgun. I think for that reason, right? You have bigger targets, more pellets likely to land the mark, more damage on top of that. And almost a 100 to 0 victory in this first round. Rush B looking very comfortable. Oh my lord, and hits that rail from a distance too, just to seal the deal. And another one. At this stage, it's going to be 100% to zero unless they can take it at this moment. Clutch completely stuck between a rock and a hard place. People all over. And they're going to clean up over and over again. Nyx is unlikely to get away from this, but Skills make, gives it a go, doesn't quite get it. And they manage to throw it back. Another thing we're seeing, though, is as soon as they see that uh, Clutch is popping that that barrier ability, they're popping to, they're swapping to that gauntlet and just shredding them up. Let's go through it. Yeah, I mean, the gauntlet's actually really effective versus... If you can get close enough to Clutch where you can sort of penetrate his shield, uh, the gauntlet will just... It does a deceiving amount of damage to him. Indeed, but round one is complete. Rush B on match point again to qualifying for tomorrow's playoffs. We'll be seeing them again if they can take this one. Looking round very good so far. They are definitely on a very good pace to do so. It's been a very quick game number one and looking like, to be honest, an even faster game number two. It kind of... I really feel like... Um, the op the Optigo for all of these larger champions together, um, they are massive targets. And when you are a big target, you're unlikely to get missed, you know, by basically anything. And because of that, you're likely, you might even die faster than a champion that's smaller because you're going to take more reliable damage. Well, this is insane. He just teleported in between all of them, but Hang was on. taken out anyway. So Protax able to grab. Oh, no, he gets taken down by Memphis. Cannot take the soul where he needs to go. There we go. Manages to get something on deck. Overpowered, have the chance to uh, drop the soul off at Obelisk B now. Right, we are going to trade up. They, they've got a percentage on the board, and they're holding they're holding the Obelisk that we saw Rush B go towards last time. So if anything, they've taken that comfort away from Rush B and Overpowered. They'd lose the soul already, though. Memphis is looking to take this to Obelisk A, but it did look so dominant. You wonder if the fact they've now been switched onto another side is even going to make a difference. Trying to go in for the charge, and Anarchy left one with health. one health! Oh my days. Oh my lord, that is unfortunate for Overpowered, for Anarchy to be left with such little life. Still alive now though, looking to do a lot of damage. Oh no, Predator uses the jump pad and gets shot through, but Prozac is there ready with the rail to follow up. So that, Rush Beef, a great job. Try and the Dire Orb going straight through the shield. That actually is one of the specific unique elements of a matchup. Ranger can completely go through that shield. The Dire Orb does not care about it at all. Oh, oh, this is the right. Ready against that kill. 
This is the rail that would have sealed the deal. But they're trying to steal this all away. Manages to take it, but very little health to get away with. How far can he get before he gets intercepted? He has the soul, but he's definitely not going to be the fastest champion, even with that bunny hop passive. He has got clutch behind him, though. Oh, and he gets taken out immediately. Memphis ready oh. and waiting. Memphis just completely ignoring everyone as well, going in for the injection, but I think he actually misses the soul. It bounces too high. Power up spawns. Now, overpowered do have access to quad damage. Soul's taken away. Skills manages to steal it away. Already looking a lot better for overpowered. Oh, oh no. Luminous gets Predator as well. And now this quad damage does go back into the hands of Overpowered, so it's not the end of the world. I'm going to drop the uh, soul off again. Took a little bit of extra time, though. Kind of missed it a little bit. A little bit of quad damage left. A few shots coming out. The Gauntlet is there, and Memphis with the Super Shotgun steal it away. They're going in for a big assault. So many frags trading around, but ultimately, the soul does go back into the possession of Rush B, who at this stage, they only need to win this round, and they are going to move on. There we go, there's that ball rush charge. Go oh, and they trade that frag for frag. We are seeing it. so many gauntlet kills this round. What is going on? Oh, oh he needs to rail this health gradually starting to go down. The LG is going to do enough to shred him down. Once again, there's the ghost walk forced out. I really feel like Memphis, uh, his anarchy in particular, has done such an amazing job of just running rings around overpowered as a team. They have the soul. He's going to get back safely. Trying to reach oh, Yeah, repositions where he's going to go. Sees that he's in the way. There's they're waiting for him. He's going to do it. Two of them there. He, did he drop it in time? I believe he did, but there are so many people watching out for Rush B's Obelisk. Today. I don't know how long he's going to sit here for, to be honest. Spread against it. He's got a lot of health, but that's only going to last so long against rockets like that. And he gets put straight back into the possession of Rush B. So much more of an even round, though. 35%-ish, 27 and power can definitely do this, they just need to be able to get oh, this soul fun. back, but easier said than done. Look at that clock. He's paying attention to the fact that the power up is going to spawn again, but at this stage, it's like it's not really mattering too much. And it's such a chaotic match, even without it. But here we go, the fight for power up begins. It's going to be protection. Overpowered, they have so many chunky champions. They need this protection to become unbelievably useful with it. Nice airborne rocket. They're really trying to focus him down, trying to shred the health, but he has so much left. They have the soul. Sawlag still unscathed, can take so much more damage. Just look at how little she has to care about taking all this. And protection doing so much work, beginning to wear out, but just think of how much he's taken already. Overpowered, though, have delivered the soul. They're going to get a little bit of percentage here. Coming up behind Memphis. Is he going to catch the midair? The uh, rail is going to do a good enough job for that, I think. Is like not out of the sky. Now they're sort of more positioned here. All oh, 100 damage, direct rocket. Oh, kind of misses the rocket splash though. He didn't get any more damage on the board, so he's going to be able to get away. And Nick using that. Um, that was unfortunate. Unfortunately, it looks like Rush Beer holding onto the soul, putting it back towards A where they want it to be. Sometimes I feel like those suicides might be to try and give yourself more health on the respawn or something. Or they might be external. I mean, Either obviously, way. You know, if you're going to hit someone too close to them, then you will unfortunately do too much damage. Every now and then, it does happen. There's that injection again. A much now, again, closer. A 80 health, so if you can get one more of those, you'll be able to take a rail, which can be really important in this game mode, especially the later on it gets. I think it's a very important, uh, very, very, like, not thought about as much element of anarchy, where he becomes a lot more dangerous in sacrifice about halfway through. Because once he starts popping those injections and increasing his max health... <laughs> he was just... <laughs> Sam was waiting there with the gauntlet, and he got two of them. Absolute BM. That was just cheeky. Is he going to get a third? Oh, no, he tries to, but he gets st stolen away from him. But I was saying, Anarchy becomes a lot more dangerous about halfway through when he actually goes above 80 HP, because at that stage, he can tank more than one rail before he gets fragged. Which, as a soul runner, is key. You know, not dying on that one rail, taking two. I mean, that's the difference between getting the obelisk and not getting the obelisk. He's getting oh. 90%. Oh, wow, he just gets splapped by the bull rush. Protection. Oh, no, oh, no. Rush yeah. has the protection on the scale barrier. He collects it. Wow. Just passes the soul to him. Gives him the tools he needs to drop off. And now he's got protection. Can he even stop this? Keep him away. Oh, the massacre. Oh dear, 99%, I think that That's is it. it, and that is that. We find ourselves with Rush B advancing through to tomorrow's playoffs through some really confident play at the end there with the gauntlet.
I don't think I've seen as many gauntlet kills as I just saw in that match. I mean, it, it, to a degree, it made sense because you're slightly slower champions in the heat of a fight. You're you're less likely to miss them with that because they're 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 big characters. But at the same time, I think they just might have been uh, having a bit of fun with that one by the end. Right, for sure, but well played to Rushby. We'll be seeing them again tomorrow. Props to Overpowered for getting so far. Better luck next week. Well, I'm sure we'll be seeing them again, no doubt. Of they course. Can get this far, though, so of course. I'm sure they can do it again. But that is that, I think, for now. All of the series for the day are finished. We have some really good teams qualified for tomorrow already, so congratulations to those, and we'll see them all again tomorrow. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to use the hashtag QWC and hashtag Quake on Twitter to let us know what you thought of the day's matches, what you expect to see tomorrow, and, well, hopefully you enjoy it. So, I mean, did we have... Tomorrow, we have the Sunday playoffs for both Duel and Sacrifice. I'm going to run by the matchups that we have lined up. So it's going to be Toxic versus Ron, and this is all Duel, by the way. Uh, Luminous versus Noctis, Neutrino versus Strengths, Rel versus Agent, Vu versus Zoot, Hell versus Cooler, uh, Vishal versus Claws, and Inns versus Cypher. So these are going to be eight matchups, all of which there's going to be some incredible Quake Champions uh, talent from this side of the pond. Really excited for these matches. I think this was a nice match to finish up, I think, when it comes to sacrifice. Oh, we saw nice some interesting see champions. some clutch on the on the board as well. Obviously, Rushby only played it on this one map, but you can clearly see why they would. That barrier being so useful in so many of these sort of choke points and the scale barrier being very effective on Ruins of Sarnath. I mean, it all just comes down to team awareness, knowing what champions are going on which map, and putting it to good use. And Rushby just gave us a bit of a masterclass in that. They just did a really good job. And I think Ruins of Sarnath was... Uh... Do you think the awaiting two gauntlet kills is going to be here? I hope so. When he was just standing at the exit, revving the gauntlet, and they walked into it. I mean, to be fair, it's a read, right? If, if you predict they're going to use the teleporter, and they get sent straight through, I if mean, you're, you're not confident really, it's going to happen. Yeah, you're not really in control of where you go when you come through a teleporter. So it's like, well, if I'm going to read you're going to come through it, I'm just going to stand here and uh, mince you up, mate. Of course, but uh, regardless, it was definitely it worked. <laughs> it worked out to their favor. Every replay, someone's holding a, do a gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> I think it really sums up how that series went. To be fair. Oh, and there we go. There's that ball rush charge. Oh, and the trade as well. No gold big there. body beats big body. This moment was really important, though. You just saw how much damage Sawlag can soak up when she's got the protection. Like, it's uh, unbelievable how useful this is. But ultimately, this series did go in the favor of Rush oh, B. There it is. <laughs> you saw him. He was waiting. He was standing still. But, and of course, this is our final clip. Why not? Why wouldn't it be? Nice. Good job. Great games, folks. Of course. But. On the subject of great games, we are done for the night. Thank you very much for watching at home. Make sure to check back again tomorrow. Make sure you're following at ESL Quake on Twitter to, for all updates on this Quake World Championship that will be happening and taking place over the next month or so. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of the games tomorrow. We have been Ketchup and Mustard. We'll be seeing you again tomorrow, and we'll see you there.